The way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media. It's a reason why we decided it's important to look at what's being discussed online. And because it is Social Media Minute, we have to talk about Justin Bieber. They cannot coexist without each other. <laughs> Just a thought. We're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. How Don't are you? Don't you think? I mean, Justin yeah. Bieber, social media. <laughs> Absolutely. Without one, would his fame be this big? Would his fortunes be this big? Questions. Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start on YouTube, by the way, for those of you guys yep. who are wondering. All right, let's jump into our first story of the day. Winter is here. Yeah. <laughs> and Winter's so is here. Yeah, winter solstice. And it's the shortest uh, day of the year. <laughs> Lovely. I mean, is that why for... I'm having difficulty getting up in the morning? Possibly. <laughs> it's so dark. Yeah. For those of us living in the northern hemisphere, <laughs> at least uh, in it is the shortest day of the year. And um, yeah, that means, well, let's think on the bright side. There are brighter days ahead. Yeah, literally. The yeah. days are going to start getting longer. <laughs> it feels like the tides are turning yeah. and my mornings will be less stressful. That's right. The situation <laughs> is actually reverse. Okay. Uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, we're Oops. talking about countries like uh, Argentina, Madagascar, mm. New Zealand, and South Africa. Now, 10% of the world's population lives in the Southern Hemisphere. Ah. And there, December solstice marks the longest day of the year and, of course, the beginning of summer. Mm. Yep. All right. So midwinter festivals have long been celebrated on the winter solstice day each year by current and gets what, ancient cultures, too. That's right. In the West, uh, many elements of the Christmas holiday holiday, in fact, uh, were influenced by a Roman pagan midwinter mm. festival, which celebrated the god of agriculture and time. And uh, it fell near the winter solstice every year, which usually December 21st, December 22nd. Okay. This year, it's December 22nd. It's really cold outside, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, Tongji, uh, the word for winter solstice in Korean, uh, celebrates the symbolic rebirth of the sun and uh, it signals the return of spring. And although it's an unofficial holiday here, there are events mm. and uh, celebrations related to Tongji uh, that uh, do take place. Uh, yeah, and we're going to talk about that yeah. in, in one of them in just a moment because it's delicious. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me talk about some of the traditions from the past. Yeah. So, uh, farmers back in the day, uh, used tongji as a way to predict the upcoming agricultural season. Uh, so, for example, if the winter was cold or snowy on tongji, mm. uh, the upcoming harvest would be bountiful with oh. uh, high yields. Right. On the other hand, if the weather was warm, the upcoming year would bring apparently bad luck, oh. adversity, and disease to crops. You know, it, it seems that our ancestors were wise beyond anything we can explain yeah. with modern science. I wonder if there's any scientific backing to this. It's, it's ironic, right? Because I would have thought the reverse, but yeah. winter's supposed to be cold. Yeah. So okay. uh, well, today's really cold, so yeah. maybe next oh. uh, harvest season we'll, we'll see some big yields. I mean, throughout this year, we were talking about the effects of global warming and how That's right. Well, a great, great deal of agricultural industry was hit hard mm -hmm. by the changes that perhaps we weren't prepared yeah. for. Wishing for better luck next year. Now, there's a special dish Koreans enjoy on the day of Dongji. <laughs> in the past, yes. yes. In the present, yes. Yes, a pat joke we're talking <laughs> about, which is a red bean porridge. Mm. It's basically a really thick porridge. If you go to any one of the, the more traditional markets mm. uh, in the city, mm. you'll be able to find this dish today. Yes. 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 So yeah. the porridge is made by boiling red beans together with rice. And uh, some families like to add rice flour dumplings mm. or seashim. And uh, they're both sweet and savory versions of of the dish, uh, sometimes kalguksu or hand cut noodles are thrown into the mixture for extra heartiness. You know, I never got on board with the kalguksu mm -hmm. in the red bean porridge. To me, it looks like dessert and dinner together yeah. in one bowl. Yeah. But people love it. People love it. And then maybe I just, I'm, I'm missing out. I don't know. This dish is really hearty. Have okay. it for long time. It's just going to sit with <laughs> within you okay. for yeah the rest of the day uh, but it warms you up for sure <laughs> and um yeah it's 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 delicious i prefer the sweeter version Me too. to the savory version because i can't eat too much of it because feels it's so rich like a dessert what's funny uh, actually diane informed me i didn't actually see the interview myself uh -huh. but uh, the ladies of uh, new jeans apparently they're so young and and and, and some of them lived you know overseas most of their yep, lives yep. so they didn't realize that patchuk or red bean porridge uh -huh. was a thing oh so they thought it was chocolate soup <laughs> And I thought, yeah, from afar, it does look like that. You know what? A lot of foreigners, when they come to Korea, yeah. they, they try like tanpat bang and yeah. any dessert with like pat in it or on it. Yeah. They they mistake it for as a 
Is it a chocolate? For being chocolate, yeah. It does look like chocolate. Yeah. I mean, and, and maybe the, the sweet version. Yes. It does taste like dessert, right? right? <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll brave the, the mm-hmm. red bean porridge and car- the cargo version of yeah. it. Um, Try it. It sounds like 2,000 calories in a bowl. It is. <laughs> Now, why red beans? Yes. Some of you might be wondering. So the color red plays an important symbolic role. In the past, people believed that ghosts and spirits, evil spirits, disliked the color red. Uh, and eating the red bean porridge was a symbol of positive energy. And it was believed to keep evil spirits at bay. All right. So if you're wishing for a good year 2023, yeah. red beans might be on your side. That's right. Moving forward. Forward, the days are going to get longer. That's all I'm looking forward to. Longer days, yep. brighter mornings. That's right. That sounds good. Yep. On to our second story of the day. Uh, as we've talked about in recent months, actually recent weeks, uh, a lot of events are returning since the outbreak of the pandemic. Yep. And Seoul City has actually put together their ice rink for the first time in three years. Yeah, the ice skating rink at Seoul Plaza is back for the first time in three years. Mm. It's a landmark mm. of Seoul that welcomes visitors every winter, but it was closed abruptly in January of 2020, almost three years ago, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, according to the Seoul City government, the rink, uh, which opened yesterday, will be operated until February 12th, and uh, it's going to be open from 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. during the weekdays, and from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on weekends, as well as national holidays. We, of Mm. course, have Seoul coming up, right? Now, on days, when fine dust levels uh, surpass a certain point. The rink is going to be closed, of course, to protect uh, public health. Mm. And all of this information regarding such closures mm. will be posted in advance on uh, the website. Soulskate.co.kr That's, That's right. right. You can also make reservations there. Now, the beauty of this Seoul City operated ice rink is that it is crazy affordable. Yeah, it's 1,000 won, which is like 77 cents. You guys, what costs 1,000 won Especially today? in this day and age. Yeah. Now, the price has remained the same since the rink first opened <gasps> in 2004, almost 20 years ago. Oh, wow. um, you can rent safety equipment like helmets and knee pads mm. for free uh, at the site and personal lockers you can also use as well for an additional 1,000 won. The locker costs as much as the entry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, the city has promised to double the number of safety workers on the site, uh, deploy medical workers as well to ensure public safety. Mm. It's also going to follow government measures on COVID-19 in operating the rink as well. Okay, so safety precautions check, affordability yep. check. It sounds like it's a nicer way to, I don't know, enjoy the year and without yeah. breaking the bank. That's right. Again, soulskate.co.kr. Go there and check out all the information. And on to our final story today, Justin Bieber conquered the world yeah (laughs) again (sighs) it seems just like yesterday he debuted and he was a kid (laughs) and he was youtube famous yes he was youtube famous who made him face was it usher it wasn't usher was it scooter wait scooter brown is the guy who took him to the next level that's right it's probably usher (laughs) anyways uh, justin bieber is close to a deal to sell his music rights to blackstone inc Mm. uh, in a transaction valued at around 200 million dollars. Uh, the potential deal includes the pop star's interest in both his publishing and recorded music catalog. Mm. Um, we didn't really talk about this. Uh, did we talk about it? How the music catalog market yeah. exploded uh, amid the low interest rate environment of the pandemic. Uh, but the cost of borrowing money has gone up since. Mm. Buyers are increasingly having more trouble financing deals. Mm. And rationalize the multi-million dollars that these artists are seeking. That's right. I mean, this is our life's work. It's our legacy. Yep. And I mean, selling the rights to everything that they've produced and it's it's it should amount to a significant mm-hmm. amount. Now, just the idea of legacy artists, I think there was a time when we thought it was reserved for, I don't know, artists with decades of career yep. or in, in archives that extends beyond, I don't know, 12 years that Justin Bieber has. Yeah. But anyway, times have changed. And despite the tricky circumstances mm-hmm. with financing, 
it's it's something that Justin Bieber is seeking. Yep. He's 28 years young still. <laughs> he did debut at a really young age, yep, didn't he? Yep. His songs are considered also young in the music copyright market. So what does this all mean? Is he shaking up the status quo again? You know, many investors have said that older music is a safer investment, mm. um, especially as streaming of decades old catalogs has boomed. Now, investing in newer music is seen by some as high higher risk because uh, its popularity for the long run is untested. Right. Um, after music is first released, its consumption and the revenue, it generates spikes at the outset. Yeah, yeah. And then it tends to, you know, sort of like wane mm. uh, for about a decade, uh, especially eventually a song or catalog reaches a steady predictable rate of play. But, uh, you know, Justin Bieber is is relatively young yeah. in the music industry, yeah. industry. So, you know, investors We'll have to take a risk, basically. I mean, $200 million sounds like a big deal, right? And yep. that's just a starting price. I mean, just to make a comparison, I mean, these legacy artists like are... Like Bob Dylan? Yes. Stevie Nicks, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> they have recently sought deals to help cement their legacies and participate in tax benefits. Mm. But uh, some younger artists as yeah. well, uh, including John Legend and Ryan Tedder, have also moved to capitalize on the market as well. Okay, so if Justin Bieber does get this deal, would it break some Sort of record? Yeah, this deal could be the largest music rights acquisition mm. for Hypnosis. Uh, earlier this year, Hypnosis Songs Capital purchased the song catalog rights of Justin Timberlake, <laughs> another relatively young seller, in a deal valued at just above $100 million. So now they're just collecting Justin's. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all right. Uh, I think that's where we have to end uh, the segment right. today. Uh, however, thanks for all the updates. Mm-hmm. Letting you go. I think we're going to play a Justin Bieber song. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow, Erica. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.